Welcome back to Design Smith. In this video, we're going to be taking three classic grunge album covers and redesigning them as Swiss album covers. Before we get started, please subscribe to support the channel. So my goal here is to try to capture the essence of each one of these classic album covers in Swiss design and see what we can do to represent them in Swiss design elements. And since there's really no hard and fast rule for Swiss design elements per se, we kind of have a lot of freedom here. So let's go ahead and start with Nirvana's Nevermind. I'm just going to move this right over here. And when I look at this album cover, obviously the very first thing that you notice is the dollar. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You know what you notice when you see this album cover, and I've got it covered for YouTube reasons. But besides the dollar, besides the baby, the main thing that stands out to me is the pool water. And so what I would do here is to do kind of like a gradation of the pool water itself. And minimalism is definitely inherent in Swiss design, so we can represent this as a minimalist gradient. So I'm gonna color drop on the lighter blue up here, and then color drop on the darker blue down here, and now we'll just select both of these, activate the blend tool, and we've got a really cool gradation going on here. Although it's a little bit too smooth for what we are looking for, so we're gonna bring the steps down to probably eight. That looks good. The bars themselves are a little bit large. I'd like for them all to be the same size. We're gonna set this one to one inch and do the same thing down here. And then we'll go back into our blend option and just increase those steps to 10. All right, that looks good. Okay, so we've got the pool water represented for the background. Now let's go ahead and lay down some text. And I am feeling in the mood to use man rope today. Part of me wonders what it would look like if you just centered up the title and then put Nirvana's name directly underneath it. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so the kerning on that looks good. Now let's bring this up to 90. I like to work in numbers that are divisible by three. If you wanna learn more about typescaling and Swiss design, then check out this video right up here. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate this down here and now we'll divide this by three and we will type Nirvana. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is what the album cover would look like if it were designed in 2018. Of course, with the exception of this font not being Helvetica. I don't know if you remember 2018 or not, but everybody rebranded and everybody used Helvetica. Okay, let's kern up Nirvana here. Okay, this is looking good. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably not so much Swiss design as it is minimalist design. And they're definitely related to each other, but if we were gonna be using Swiss design, I'd be using a grid and I'm not using a grid. So we'll just say this is minimalist. However, one thing I will do is align Nevermind to this line and keep Nirvana on that line. And I wonder if there's any way that we can just kind of visually represent this dollar right here. We might need to make it like a lighter type of green. Let's make it shaped a little bit more like a dollar. There we go, one by two inches will be good. I don't wanna add too many intricacies to make it too busy. So what I'm gonna do is add an inside border here and we'll just make it like a darker green right there. Thicken this up a little bit and now we'll go in and move this little hole right here and then just punch out a hole and then send that to the back to bring back our stroke. And let's go ahead and create the hook here. And this is just gonna be running behind here and it'll come out right here. And I'll add a little circle right here for the hook. Let's move this right here just so we can work with it separately. Just makes things a little bit easier to do it that way sometimes. And now we'll select our lines for the hook, make it a little bit on the darker side. And then this portion of the hook needs to be behind the dollar and it needs to come out of that hole right there. So I'm gonna expand this and now unite these together and now click on the hook and click on the dollar and click on our divide symbol and then just click this shape right here and color drop that right there. And then we'll send this to the back to bring back our border. And we'll select everything, move it over here, bring all of it to the front. And then what I'm thinking is we will align the square to the center of the poster like this. And then we'll move this down here. Maybe we'll line that dollar up right there. And then now grab that top anchor point and bring it all the way to the top of the artboard here. And then we'll select the text and bring it all the way forward. All right, so there's our Nevermind Swiss design slash minimalist design poster. The dollar looks a little bit more like a tea bag, but that's totally fine. All right, next let's move over to Pearl Jam. I'm just gonna move this directly on top right here. And what I'm seeing right here is we have this E, it's like this large uppercase E, then we've got an A, and then we've got what I assume is probably an R. But when you look at it at first glance, it kind of looks like a whole bunch of squares being stacked on top of each other. So I think I'll just do this really large pixelation type of thing with a whole bunch of pink squares. And I guess more realistically, what we're creating here is kind of like a mosaic. So we'll just do this right here, and then we will just kind of randomly color drop 
Okay, that's looking really cool. And now we will use the same font that we used over here. So I'm gonna hit copy and just paste it right over here. And this time I'm gonna reverse it and make the band name nice and large and the title of the album really small, just because I feel like it. All right, so we're gonna go right over here and I'll just align this right there. I wanna go a little bit higher. And now let's color drop this white color that we've got up here. And then we'll balance it, not 10, right over here in the bottom right. And let's see what we can do in terms of just kind of aligning things up a little bit differently. You don't always have to exactly align things center. I know that for me personally, that kind of thing messes with my brain a lot. So you kind of have to break out of your own comfort zone and try new things from time to time. And in this case, one of those new things is not centering text, even though it looks like it's almost centered. It just kind of gives it a little bit more of an organic feel to it. And visually, this is kind of helping to complete the box look that we've got here. We've got this row of squares and it's kind of making up this type of mosaic effect. And with our slightly off-center text and with the title being right down here in the bottom right, it kind of visually reinforces the square. So I'm wondering if because the baseline of Pearl Jam is kind of sitting right here, maybe we should make the very top part of 10 sit on the outer edge of that. Okay, that is actually pretty cool. And then just humor me for a second. I wanna see what happens if we do something like this. Add like a little stroke on this particular square right here. If we bring it up to there and like inside. Okay, that is really cool, I like that. And then we have the shot of the five guys right here joining hands in solidarity. So I'm wondering if we could kind of visually represent that somehow. We don't have any squares where there's five in a row, but what we can do is kind of create some other squares and see if we can show those being united. So I'm wondering if there's a way to show five different squares right here all being united together. I'm just gonna kind of play around with some stuff. And so I'm gonna create a square right here and we are going to rotate it 72 degrees because that's 360 divided by five is 72. And the stroke is too heavy, so we'll bring it down to two. And I'm thinking that we'll take this out. And then this abstract shape right here can represent the five hands being joined together. Okay, last we have the Soundgarden Super Unknown album cover. And what I'm gonna do here is do like the first top third of it as a black background. And then I'll just leave this white right down here. So the upper portions of this is gonna be 12 by eight. And then the lower portion will be four inches tall. And that matches pretty closely to what's going on here. And then this actual album cover here is a severe distortion of the founding members faces. Here's a photo of it and you can just kind of make out the four members here. It's very distorted. I've always thought that Chris looked like a bat in this photo. His ear just looks so pointed right there. But it's a really cool image and you can see the representation of each one of their four faces. So the distorted faces here, I might try to do something with this. So let's just kind of draw some circles right here. And what I'll do is I'll take the original album cover itself and use it as a guide. And we'll put this circle right up here. Let's bring it to the front. I wanna get the circles in kind of roughly the same placement as the original faces here. And now each one of these are gonna have the same effect on here. And if you notice right in here, we've got the yellow and then it kind of fades out into this red. And that's what I want each one of these to do. So I'm gonna color drop on this red right here. And now we'll select both of those and just blend it. And that's looking really cool. It's very nice and minimal. We've got four bands of color right here. And now I'll just duplicate them to our other circles here. All right, that's looking really cool. And what we'll do is copy this right here and we'll bring this down into here. I'll do sound garden in this area. And we'll center this up. And what I'll do is draw just a temporary shape right here and align this with that lower portion. I actually kind of like the large type right up there. I think that looks really cool. So let's go ahead and kern this. All right, that's looking really nice right up there. And I was wondering, what if we did something down here that kind of looked like registration marks and they follow the same colors going on there? Okay, it's looking nice. I just don't know if it's necessary. Let me just kind of play around with it for a minute. All right, that is looking kind of cool right there. I don't know if it's necessary, but if I would do that, then I would center this right up here to make sure that that is directly centered with the white space. 
There we go. Okay, I think that's actually pretty cool. All right, so here's our original lineup of our 90s grunge album covers that we redesigned into Swiss or maybe more appropriately, minimalist album covers. I think each one does a really good job of kind of representing the original album cover using Swiss elements. I hope this was inspiring to you, even if it was just a little bit. Feel free to take this idea and apply it to whatever you want. I'd love to see what you come up with. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.